Welcome to the podcast, Claim Your Excellent Life, with your host, Suzanne Kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne will teach you how to do this through building high self esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness, as well as other useful free gifts for you. In this episode of Claim Your Excellent Life, we are speaking about, well, the passing of my mother. You know, I really thought that she was going to outlive all of us because... She had that spunken spirit in her. Her mother lived to be 95 years old and had a really long life. However, my mother had a hip replacement surgery after falling out of her bed in January, the January before her 84th birthday. And with this inability to emulate herself any longer, even with a walker, I do believe she found herself quite miserable. She was in pain due to rheumatoid arthritis, which was unrelenting, and she was always cold, most especially because she really did stop eating at some point. I don't know exactly when, but she had dropped 40 pounds, and that's a significant amount of weight loss for anyone. And of course, if we don't eat the proper nutrition, our bodies are not going to function the way that they need to. So it was just a matter of time before her organs shut down on her. In her case, her breathing just got fainter and fainter. And when the nurses saw that she was unresponsive, the rattle breathing that we know happens right before they're ready to go, they called all of the daughters who were local to come and be at her bedside. She actually had a very beautiful passing. As a hypnotist, I do believe that she was aware of the fact that we were there, even though she was unresponsive. Because I know that people who are anesthetized do hear things, and their feelings are the last things to go. My youngest sister was stroking her head, and talking to her, and as my younger sister and her husband were singing the song she loved by the Western and folk singers that she enjoyed all her life, my baby sister was singing along with them. We had my youngest sister and my younger sister and their spouses there with us as well. But as... A professional who's worked in elder care, I was sort of serving in two forms because the last 10 days or so, I've been in the area very close to her nursing home, making sure that they were doing what they could do to make her feel as comfortable as possible. Working really hard to get them to give her foods that she would hopefully eat because seriously, a tablespoon of applesauce isn't going to feed a body for too long, as we all know. In any case, the learnings that I received with this loss are many, and I'd like to share them with you at this point. First of all, I want it to be known that I hadn't seen my mother in seven years. I hadn't talked to her either. And this is because even though I had helped her out through some very challenging times, she was fairly unstable and abusive to me. Abusive to me to the point where it was healthier for me to just not interact with her. And that's sometimes the decisions that one needs to make for their own health. You know, I had just had a brain tumor treated right before the last time I rescued her once again. And it was just too much for my own body's constitution. So I needed to step out. As it happened, I was coming out east again to Massachusetts because I had a few clients who wanted to see me in person. And 
a couple of other clients that were referred to me, making it worthwhile to come out this way again. While I was in Montana is when I received the email from my older sister, my mom's power of attorney, saying that the nursing home wanted to put her under hospice care, mainly to give her services that she wouldn't otherwise qualify for, because it took her a really long time to get from the bed to the wheelchair and to eat and to do whatever else the things that people need to do for their activities of daily living. Little did we know that within a week and a half, she would be gone. Though it became kind of obvious to me as she was sleeping more and more and really uninterested in eating anything at all. Even as she complained her stomach was hurting her or that she was nauseous. Maybe the medications had something to do with that, but my own feeling is that she is feeling pain in her stomach because she was literally starving herself to death. Having been in elder care, home care for six years, from 96 to 2001 or so, I can tell you, this happens. When people are old, tired, in a lot of unrelenting pain, as my mother was, and without the ability to take care of themselves any longer, they get tired and they're ready to go. So my message to her for the 10 days that I saw her was basically, it's her life and it's up to her to make a choice when she's ready to go. She can go at any time. And I feel very blessed for the entire family, including herself, that she finally let go. And she did it with the family that could be there surrounding her. Now, it's kind of an interesting situation to find myself in, actually. Being with my two younger sisters and her spouses, as my mom is basically on her deathbed. And as beautiful as the moments were that we tried to create for her, to say that everything was perfect is to really make it unrealistically better than it was. There were some issues that came up, and this happens a lot when someone is losing a mother or a father or a sibling, someone close to them, but maybe someone who they had their issues with. In my case, I was pretty much at peace with my mom and where she was to the degree that I could be because she was actually very sweet and in a pretty good space, haven't been giving the medications that she required to keep her emotionally stable. This is the person that the nursing home people, the caregivers and the residents got to know very well over the seven years that she was a resident there. And all we heard every time we walked in there was how much they loved her, how much they wanted her to get better. I had one guy who actually told me to make her eat, which I wish I could have done, but, you know, she had her own mind, and she did what she chose. And the truth of the matter is we all have a choice to make when we get to this point in our lives. That having been said, though I was able to help with the medical care as I, best I could given my medical background, and the psychological issues being understood based on my psychological background, professionally speaking, I really was only there to the degree that I could be there to make those things happen. And yes, I did give her some caring words, and I brought her back to the past, to the times that were, well, more positive for her, I would say. And luckily for her, she really had no negative memories. She just remembered that she had two loving husbands and enjoyed raising her five kids. And you know what? That was perfect for her. So this is the learning. We get through what we have to because that is what's needed. And it wasn't just needed for her and for my sisters. It was needed for myself too to create the closure that I needed on her life as positive as my childhood was with her when I became an adult things were not easy at all. So I had kind of mixed feelings, but I was glad that we were able to at least end on a very positive note. I'm grateful forever for the 
magnificent way my youngest sister handled this whole situation with she and her husband were traveling from Connecticut up to Massachusetts near the New Hampshire border from January until her death on September 9th, at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. She was present and there in a most loving and caring way, and I'll forever be grateful to her for that because it was something I couldn't do at this point in my life. It's just the way it was. And she was very grateful for me being here when she couldn't because she had to work. So we worked together. My older sister, the power of attorney, did the best she could from afar, and I was happy to help her out as well, kind of being her legs on the ground, singing as I was in the area, and she couldn't due to her own situation back in Florida. So being a part of the family, doing what was necessary, having it all come together as best as we could make it happen is something to be very gratified for. To know that my mom is no longer suffering, feeling freezing cold all the time, she wouldn't eat enough calories to heat herself up, even during the summertime, (laughs) and being out of that horrific pain that she felt from her rheumatoid arthritis is really a much better place for her to be. I'm also very glad that I was able to share with her my next project for Dawning Visions Hypnosis, which is to really do some work in the area of pediatric oncology, because I did have a brother who died when I was two months old, and he did have leukemia. He wasn't quite four, and my mother, to her credit, knew when he was one and a half that he just didn't have the energy of boys, even never having had a boy before. She knew something was terribly wrong. It took another year or so for the doctors to figure it all out, and it was kind of too late, although Seriously, back in 61, I don't think they really knew how to help kids heal themselves of leukemia as they do today. What I do know is as a hypnotist, there's a lot of things that I can do to help the parents reduce their stressors, take away any guilt they might feel, give the siblings something to do that's fun and spiritual, and give them the loving care that they need as well, while helping the pediatric oncology patient perhaps visualize their tumor away as I did with my benign brain tumor back in 2009. And if that's too much to ask, there's many other things we can do to help them with side effects. Everything from getting rid of nausea and being able to eat more, building up their immune system, being able to do pre- and post-operative care for them, dealing with insomnia, dealing with pain control, you name it we can pretty much help them to work through these issues and have them be much less of a problem in their life. And that's something that I'm dedicated to do. So if anyone is interested in helping me to create a sponsored program for them, the monies that I get from the trainings I'm going to do, helping the conventional healers as well as hypnotists and LLP trainers, to learn how to do this work with the addictions that I've been doing for the past 15 years. I'm certainly going to need the help from other people to help me get this thing off the ground because my dream is to really allow the families to come together, maybe 12 at a time, to learn these healing skills and tools and have a wonderful time together in a place far away from here in a spiritual venue such as the ones that I've been lucky enough to be able to experience in my life. Maybe in Jerusalem, Israel, maybe in Rotorua, New Zealand, where the geothermal events are so cool that you feel you're in an ethereal place because it gets really steamy when it gets damp out. Or maybe someplace in Ireland or many of the other places on the planet Earth that have healing types of energy involved, where these families can come together and just do their healing journey without needing to pay money they don't have due to the expense of taking care of a kid with cancer. If you're at all interested in helping me with this, just send me an email at suzanne at dawningvisions.com or send me a text at 781 
315-315-1719. Because this is something that I'm doing in honor of my brother. And I let my mom know that this was something I was going to do. So please help me make this last promise to my mom come true. So that we can help kids and families in ways that weren't available to my mom and my older sisters and my brother back in 1961. As always, I thank you for taking your time to be with me. Until next time. If you have enjoyed Claim Your Excellent Life, we'd really appreciate it if you go over to iTunes and give it a five-star review. If you have found Claim Your Excellent Life to be helpful to you, and maybe even life-altering with the information that we have shared here, and to allow us to continue this work, which we really do enjoy doing for you, you can sponsor us at patreon.com. That's spelled P as in Paul, A-T-R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com. Again, that's P as in Paul, A-T as in Tom, R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com. Where there's a few different levels of sponsorship that you can choose from to help us to continue doing this work. We thank you for any assistance that you are able to give us. Thank you for listening to the podcast, Claim Your Excellent Life, with your host, Suzanne Kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne teaches you how to do this through building high self-esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self-esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness as well as other useful free gifts for you.